Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another Sun Devil Learning Lab lesson. My name is Michael Barker. I'll be your instructor today. And uh, today we're going to work on what our program calls Grade 5, Module 3, Lesson Number 2. And quite simply, it's adding fractions. We've worked on our number bars before, and we broke things into fractions. And we've also looked at fractions in a few other ways. But before we start, a few things we need to go over. Our objective today is we're going to make equivalent fractions with sums of fractions that have like denominators. And as you settle in, let's follow a few simple directions. I try to repeat these every time. Uh, let's make sure that you're comfortable in a good setting, quiet, uh, no little brothers or sisters running around, no dogs just dis distracting you. And if something like that does happen, maybe you need to pause the video. You got to remember that the, most of these lessons aren't live, so you can uh, pause and and regroup whenever you want. But to make it go smoothly for you and, and finish up quickly, um, I would recommend we gather any supplies you might need today. You're gonna need a couple of pencils, a notebook, or at least a several sheets of paper, but I would hope you'd use a notebook. The notebook will help you maintain a record and it gives you something that's a little easier to go back to. Although you can always remember to go back and review any of these lessons if you get stuck on a point. Uh, Paper, scissors, if you're gonna use them to make fraction bars and a ruler would still be helpful. I would always try to keep a ruler with me in these lessons, even though you may not be measuring, you can uh, a lot of times draw lines and if you wanna be precise, you can break your, your number lines into exact increments. Uh, finally, be sure and use the restroom before we start. And again, remember that you can always pause the video if you need to take a break. Okay, we're gonna to wanna to add fractions and so what I'd like to do first though is review a little bit about exactly how we described our fractions and how we placed them on the number line. If you remember in a previous lesson, we worked from whole units, then we had a half unit, and those broke into fourths, right? Fourths are two, part, two fourths is the same as one half. We kept just breaking everything into halves and we can see it expressed on the number line we have, you know what, I'll tell you what, let's look at our other illustration first. We have a whole unit, a half a unit, which there would be two parts in our whole, and we have fourths, four make up one whole, right? So on a number line, we would have zero where we have nothing, and then we can move, if we broke the line into four parts, there's one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths. And you should recall and notice that one half is the same as two fourths. And the same thing, two halves is the same as one and the same as four fourths. All things are equal is basically all we're trying to say with that part of the lesson. Another thing to look at is we finally finished up in the last lesson. We had a pretty accomplished number line that we had worked on and we made a few points. Again, we broke from the whole down to the thirds, fourths, and we spotted all of them on the line, but then we broke our line into our other increments. Our green re represented one six units, and our reds re represented one eighths. So we have one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, which is also the same as three six, and it's also the same as one half. Then we went to five eighths, six eighths, the same as three fourths, we went to seven eighths and then we went to the end, our whole, which in this case, we didn't illustrate the, the eight eighths, but eight eighths is the same as two halves, is the same as four fourths or three thirds or six six for that matter. And that was, uh, that should all be stuff that you have from our previous lesson. So now let's start with a problem, how we're gonna add those parts. I'd like to look at something simple. We're gonna look at how to add the fractions one third and one third. So the best way to illustrate it is on our number line. If we start with the, the numbers on the number line, we want to start with zero thirds and then break our line into even increments. And we know we're going to need one third, two thirds, and three thirds, which is the same as one, which is our whole. And we'll demonstrate that when we look at our solution in the next slide. So here we go, we've got our problem again, one third plus one third 
and that's going to equal our question mark. So let's look at what we did to solve it. We drew on the number line and we knew that if we went from zero to one third, that's one. And then we need another part, another one third. So that's one. So now we want to know where we finished up because those are the two parts we want to combine. We can see that our, our we wind up with the marker for two thirds, but there's another way to illustrate it if we're not sure. Let's draw a fraction bar. We draw our fraction bar and then we draw, we divide it into three sections. One, two, and here's our third section. Again, we want one of those thirds and one of those thirds, and we wanna know what the total is. So when we look at that total, we realize that we're adding one third and one third, and that would give us a grand total of one and one, two, thirds, two parts of three. Does everybody get that? Some people might want to think that we would write two six, but we're, all, we're only counting how many parts of three we have. We're not counting, we're not changing our denominator, just, just how many parts of the whole do we have? This is the number of parts in the whole. This, this is how many we're counting. And it's quite simply, that's as far as we go with that. Let's look at another sample. We'll look at another review type question before we move on. We have one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. So we wanna find out what the total of that is. And once again, we're gonna start by setting up a number line. We have, we start with zero and we wanna break it up into equal parts of fourths. So we'll have one fourth, two fourth, three fourths, four fourths. Total of four parts in our whole. And then when we do, after we do that, you should be able to work with this on your own, or if we just move ahead, I'll show you how we would solve this one. Okay, let's see what we did. Again, we knew we needed to add three of these one-fourths, right? So here's one, here's two, and here's three equal parts that we've added. And quick, easy way would be, well, we can look and we see we're at the three-fourths mark. Another way to do it would be to look, if we just add our one, plus one plus one equals three. We have a total of three fourths. And if you're still using your fraction strips, we didn't illustrate them in this demonstration. I think you can uh, work that out if you have to pause the video and use it. It'll help you give you a little more comprehension, some pretty good sense to you right there and, and illustrate what we're talking about. Once we've uh, kind of figured those two out and we've refreshed our memory how we work on this, let's take, let's take a look at a problem that we can maybe take a chance and uh, we'll try and do the next one we'll do on our own. It's going to be, it'll be this problem. Well, we'll go back one slide. I, I jumped on you. Let's add these two here. It's going to be 3 eighths plus 3 eighths plus 1 eighth. So now we're, we've got three factors we're adding, but it's the same principles and we're gonna follow the same structure we did before. Let's uh, take four minutes. I'll give you four minutes and then we'll come back and look at the solution that I, I drew for you. And we're back. I put up the solution on the board. Now let's see how, what you guys did. And if, you, if your paper looks anything like this, so if it does, I've got our note keeper up here and I recommend it. This would be a good time to take our notes and uh, keep track of what we've been doing. Let's see. Now, what I did first was I drew my number line. Again, our hole was the length of the number line. And I knew we had, our hole was made up of how many parts? Eight parts. Each one of these was a part of eight, correct? So we knew we were gonna break our line into eight parts. We had one, two, three, four parts which we also know four parts out of eight is going to be the halfway point five six parts seven parts and eight parts now our problem was to add three parts and three parts and one part and find out what the total was so on our number line we can easily go from zero start at zero and we'll take three parts one two three. Our second move 
we're going to do that one more time. We're going to take one, two, three parts. And now we need to add in one more piece, but it's only one part, so it's a short jump here to there. And that lines up. We know now that this is going to be three eighths, six eighths, seven eighths. We can count again one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths. So three eighths plus three eighths plus one eighth equals seven eighths. I wrote it down here again for you. And you can also look at it this way as three plus three plus one equals seven. So we have seven eighths. We've learned now that when we have the common denominator, when everything has the same number of parts in the whole, that we just need to add our number of parts of each individual section and we wind up with seven eighths. Okay, let's move on. Now what happens if we have more than one whole or if we have more parts that are gonna give us more than one unit? What if we have two pies or, or two pizzas or two pans of cookies that we wanna split up or two candy bars if we're using our bar? We, we can still do it and we can still use fractions and the term that we're gonna come across and we'll, we'll review a few times is what we call improper fractions. That's when our, our number are greater than one. And we're gonna work on a couple of parts of the lesson here that, that show us a few things. And some of this should be a review from previous lessons that are also part of the learning lab, but I'm gonna remind you on the number line, what our improper fractions could look like, and we're gonna use some big units to demonstrate that. We're gonna start by just taking two holes. Here's the one hole, and we divide that in half. And then say we have two more halves, which are the same as a whole. We can now just move our lines up to the number line just for an illustration purpose. Here's one half, now we have two halves. Doesn't mean we can't have three halves and then a fourth half, and they're all on the same number line. We just have to make sure that we record what we're working with and where our units, mark our units. So here obviously we have half of unit. We Here we have two halves and up on top, up in red, we wrote that we have, that's the same as our one whole unit. Three halves over here, halfway again. And then we move to our, our, our second whole unit mark, which is the same as four halves. So we can put as many number of whole units on a line as we want. We just have to remember to label everything and mark, up, mark our in, increments accordingly so that we can make sure that we keep track of what numbers we're working on. So let's look at adding fractions. And, but first, uh, what we'd like to do is we want to express 8 fifths on a number line. Now, when we look at that, we know that that's probably going to be an improper fraction, right? Because 8 fifths is going to be more than 5 fifths. So it, our number line is going to wind up looking something like this. This is how we're going to start anyway with 8 fifths when it's written as a fraction this way, it's eight parts of five. So again, let's, um, that tells us, that number eight does tell us something though, right? We know that we need at least eight fifths, but how about if we wrote a number like 10 fifths, because 10 fifths is the same as the whole number two, right? We know that two times five is gonna be 10, two sets of five would be 10. And so that we know we have two whole numbers there. So once we've drawn our line and broken it up where we've marked our five fifths and our 10 fifths, we can break it up into one, two, three, four, five, five fifths being the same as one whole. And then we can move, we need six, seven, eight fifths. We're gonna come back to that one, right? Then there's nine fifths, 10 fifths. Now that we marked our line, we can do our, our math. We'll do it this way. Let's count from zero to five. One, two, three, four, five. Five fifths, same as one. We've already covered this ground. And now we wanna go to eight. We gotta go six, seven, eight fifths. That's three more fifths, right? So now there's a, a couple of things we wanna look at. We know five fifths and three fifths 
because now we've got the same denominator, right? The same number of total parts in each unit. Five plus three is eight fifths. We've expressed that on the number line. And now we can also express it as a mixed number. We have one, five fifths is equal to one and three fifths. So our mixed number should look like this, right? One and the fraction three fifths. I think it'd be safe to know that if we had more than five fifths in our fraction, that would tell us something as well. That would tell us that we're really in a situation where we really have to look, we have another hole as part of that. And that's actually covered in another one of our lessons as well. Okay, let's move on. We're gonna to to do a similar problem here now, and we're gonna see exactly what I was talking about, how we may need more than one hole, right? We need to look at our number line and we're gonna express 7 thirds on the number line. 7 thirds, let me move my picture out of the way a little bit here. 7 thirds should look something like this, seven parts of three, okay? So when we draw our number line, we're gonna wind up with at least seven parts, but we really want more parts because we're gonna to have to have our are parts of three. So let's look at, we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine parts and we're, we're working in units of three, right? So we wanna break it up into units of three. One, two, three is three parts of three. And we know that's a whole, that's one. Four, five, six parts of three. That's another whole, so that's two. And now we're gonna to go to seven, eight, nine parts of three, and that makes, brings us to three. Okay, so now that we're there, what's our next thing to look at? We want to express seven thirds. So we have one, two, three thirds, same as one. We could write that down here, three thirds, and one, same thing, we're gonna have similar equations. Next, let's do another three. This will be our four, five, six thirds. And we run, now we've gone a total of six, we're gonna need one more, so there's seven thirds, right? These three thirds are the same as another one, right? Brings us to two. And then we have this loose last one third that we're gonna to add to this fraction, and we're gonna add down here. So when we add our fractions, we're gonna get a total of three plus three plus one gives us seven thirds. Now we wanna look at it in terms of whole numbers. We know that three thirds is one, three thirds is one, so that one plus one is two plus one third. And our improper fraction would be written as two and one third. I'll give you a few minutes so we didn't put a note picture up here, but maybe you want to take a few notes and uh, look at this before we move on. Just copy the notes, pause the recording and uh, make a couple of notes. Okay, I had you pause it just because I wanted to have, have your notes written down and look at what we were looking at so far. And I wanted to confirm this in another way for you because some of you, if you are struggling, let's look at our fraction bars. Our fraction bars will illustrate the same thing that we worked with before when we wanted to see what seven thirds look like. Some people call it an area model, I call it fraction bars, but here's what we've got. We drew our first hole, right? One hole. We broke it into one third, two thirds, three thirds. And there it is, three thirds. Now we have to take another fraction bar and we're gonna put in another three thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds. So you have three thirds, which is also another whole. Finally, we have to add our, our last little one third here to get us to seven thirds, one third. We can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thirds is what we have. And that's what we're trying to express here, right? So now we can add one plus one plus one third, two and a third. And then we have if we look at our fractions, three thirds, three thirds, one third, which gives us a grand total of seven thirds. So you, if you need to, in addition, in addition to the number line, 
In addition to writing the fractions, if you want to get your fraction bars out or even draw your fraction bars to solve the problem, you can do it that way too. And uh, all of those solutions would work pretty well. So I'm going to give you a few minutes now. I've got a worksheet here I'd like to see you work on. I want to see you show each expression on a number line. Take five minutes. And uh, what we'll do is work on the worksheet. Five minutes should be enough time to, I want to see the first two on a number line, all four. Let's just show me how you would solve these on a number line. And then uh, we'll, we'll be back in five minutes. Okay, we're back and we're going to look at the solutions now to this first worksheet and uh, hopefully you got them all done. If not, just pause the video and keep working until you're ready. But here's what your solutions should look like. I've drawn them. Uh, I took our first problem, four ninths plus one ninth, and I did, did it a couple of ways. I added four and one and it gave us five ninths. And we also can look at it on the number line. And we broke our number line. Since we knew we needed nine parts, we broke our number line into nine equal parts. And I labeled them all for you. Eventually, you may get in a habit of where you don't have to label them all. But we simply went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ninths. Pretty simple. So what I did next was I took my fraction four ninths and I counted out four parts. One, two, three, four parts. And then we had to add one more part, one ninth. We followed on our number line, five ninths. So there's our solution. Four ninths and one ninth is going to be equal to five ninths. Now this next one, I kind of gave back to you to just to make sure this one should come back to you quite easily. It should be something you, you can remember before and we just added a little another part to it. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. Plus one fourth, plus one fourth. One plus one plus one plus one. That equals four, so we have four fourths. We can confirm it on our number line. We break our number line into how many parts? Four. We have one, two, three, four parts. One part plus one part plus one part plus one part. Four fourths. Okay, let's look, move to our next part. We had two sevenths plus two sevenths plus two sevenths. Again, when we look at this, we know that we need seven parts, right? We're adding parts of seven. So we draw our number line and we go from zero to one, two, three, four, five, six. That gives us seven increments. So out of our seven increments, we start adding two, one, two, another two, one, two, and finally we go two more, one, two. Total of one, two, three, four, five, six sevenths. We just have to look at the number on our line if we're underneath our, our tick where we made our mark to confirm it or we can recount. And again, two plus two plus two is equal to six sevenths. Okay, well, then we looked, we had one last problem on that sheet. Four elevenths plus two elevenths. By now, you should know what these elevenths mean, right? How many pieces of our number line are we going to need? And our number line can get a little bit busy as we start to draw more marks, but we can still learn to do it and break it down. And, but it's also a reason why eventually we're going to have to get away from a number line because these fractions could get too small if we were talking about numbers in 64ths and numbers of that sort, but or larger. But uh, let's look for now. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven parts. Eleven out of eleven. And back here we had zero out of eleven. We're adding four elevenths, so let's count one, two, three, four, and we're adding two more. Five, six. So four elevenths plus two elevenths is equal to six elevenths. Six elevenths, same thing as four plus two gives us six, and our number of parts in the whole stay the same. So again, we're looking at six elevenths for the solution. All right, I've got one more worksheet for you. 
and it's going to be on some of the other mixed numbers and things we, we talked about a little earlier. I'd like to ask you to take about five minutes again, and I want you to express each of these following as the sum of a whole number and a fraction using improper fractions and mixed numbers. So here you need to draw a number line. Here you just need to draw a number line. And what I want you to do with the first two is, is demonstrate where we get to this point and how you broke it up. And the second part we're actually gonna do, you add the five fifths plus two fifths and then six thirds plus two thirds. So we're gonna start moving on our number line. Just a, a little bit of the clue will be that you, you're gonna be working with improper fractions and mixed numbers. So your number line is gonna be longer than one. You're gonna to have to make sure you, you break it up into the right amount of parts when you do this. So take another five minutes, work on your sheet, and it will come back and go over the, the final sheet and wrap things up for today. Okay, we should be back from our five minute break. I hope this, is, everybody got a little bit of time to finish it up again. I always remind you, that five minutes is just a recommendation, really. If you need a little more time, pause the video again, and you don't really need to come back until you're ready, and you know we'll always have a solution here for you. And this would be the last part of the lesson for today. But let's look. Nine-sevenths, we want to express that on our number line. So what, what do you think we need to do first? And uh, that's right, we have to draw our thing are nine in units of seven, but we know we're gonna need more than seven sevenths this time, right? So we hit, if we break our, nine, our line up, we know we're gonna need at least nine marks. So we draw, let's say we draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine marks, okay? But we're gonna break them into sevenths. So we have zero, then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven sevenths, right? Same thing we counted, we had seven. And that seven sevenths is one whole unit. So we'll mark that with a one. And then we're going to add two more units, right? Eight and nine. So when we have seven sevenths plus two sevenths, we wind up with one and two sevenths. Nine sevenths is the same as seven sevenths plus two sevenths, which is the same as one and two sevenths. Let's look at another example. The number line had to be a little bit longer again. But again, we know we're going to need at least nine parts. So let's look. We go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine marks on our number line. Okay, and we're gonna break them up into halves. So we'll start zero halves, one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves, six halves, seven halves, eight halves, nine halves. That's the same fraction that we got here. And how did we get there? Well, we got one, two halves, plus two more halves, plus two more halves, plus two more halves and one more half because two halves is one, four halves is the same as two or another one. Another two halves gets us to three and one more two halves gets us to four. And then we still have one stray half that we have to add on at the end. So we can look at this as adding one, two, three, four, and one half, our solution here, which the same as if we added our fractions here, we get two, four, six, eight, nine halves, same as we have here. So there's just a few different ways to write and use the number line to confirm what we were doing. All right, let's move on down to where we were, actually worked at adding a few uh, fractions to see if we wound up with, uh, mixed numbers or any proper fractions. Our first problem, five-fifths plus two-fifths. So what do we know? We know that our, our increments are gonna be fifths. We know that we're gonna need at least five and then we're gonna need a few more. So let's just start by marking. Let's, we know we're gonna probably need at least seven marks. So we'll go 
we have zero. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven marks. Okay, and let's see if that works. We have five fifths. One, two, three, four, five fifths. Five fifths is the same as one, right? And six, seven fifths. Now we're, we're there. Let's look back. How many more did we go? We went two more. So we went five fifths and two fifths. And where did we get? We wound up at seven fifths right here. Seven fifths is the same as one and two fifths. Does that make sense? Should be. Let's look at another one. We'll look at our last problem and see uh, how we did. We're gonna look at six thirds and two thirds and see what that gives us. Six and two is eight thirds, we know that. So let's see, we're gonna break our line into eight parts, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's see how we do there. We have, we go to one, two, three, four, five, six. Six thirds, six thirds, wow, that's the same as our whole number being two, because three thirds was the same as our whole number of one, it's only, it's kind of hard to see in there, but it's written there. And then six thirds is the same as a whole number two, that means we have two, two whole units. And then we have another two thirds of a whole unit, seven, eight thirds, there's our eight thirds. Six thirds plus two thirds, six plus two equals eight thirds. And another way to write it is one, two, and two thirds. I hope you found this helpful today. And that should be the last of your review lesson for this for this lesson. You can always get a more practice, go back and review what we did. And uh, I believe that we do also have more worksheets available online through the Sun Devil Learning Labs if you need to look for them. But other than that, I would say that uh, you're, get, you're getting ready and we'll move on into adding more fractions and getting a little more involved with mixed numbers and improper fractions in upcoming lessons. Thank you.